Hey, Jenna Clear Chat, Joe here. It is Sunday, June the 1st, 2nd. Oh my goodness, June the 2nd. Time is marching on. Um, thank you, Christina, for coming up with this week's topic because we were a little high and dry until this morning. <laughs> and uh, Christina picked the topic. I'm very pleased. It's a good one. It's, in what ways can a gender queer person be stealth? Do you personally live your life as stealth? Why or why not? And... Stealth is a strange word because it is kind of unique to trans folk, as far as I have always interpreted it, to mean a trans person or a person in transition who would rather be known as the gender other than the one they were born. So, But they're living their life such that no one knows the gender they were born. Now for gender queer people, I imagine it would be a little bit different because is it because we don't, is stealth for a genderqueer person just the first part of that? Like where you don't want people to know the gender you were born at all? Or is it that you want to be known as another gender? And I, I'm assuming that's the part that's going to be left off because we're not transitioning, we're genderqueer. So, as, as evidenced by this girly shirt I'm wearing, I gained a lot of weight this year and I had to buy like all new summer clothes. And everything is like ladies, I don't know, 1X or something. And this is like, I don't know, it's the boob thing. I'm sort of forced into female clothes this summer against my will. Um, I've got to buy more clothes. I just haven't gotten around to it yet. This is like all Value Village stuff. And um, I am, uh, I've never really been stealth and I've never tried to present as anything other than what I am, which is this. And this looks female predominantly, mostly because of the boobs, but let's, cut, let's even cut that. I've always liked long hair um, and I've always had this voice that I've never attempted to change. So... The main thing, I guess, would be the fact that I, wear, I typically wear men's glasses. I have a very prominent nose, and I have not chosen to alter it, and I do not wear makeup. So I have a fairly, I'd say I think I have a gender-neutral face, but some people might say I have a feminine face. I don't know. I think I'm not a pretty girl, right? So I don't fall into the category of pretty, and that girl and pretty kind of go hand in hand sometimes, I think. So I just go through life appearing... Uh, as, e as easy as I can make life. For me, easy is simple. Now, my hair is a bit of a ratty mess because I just got in the door and I was windblown and I was singing Darius Rucker's Wagon Wheel the whole, like an hour solid, the whole song on repeat uh, with the wind in my hair. So it's kind of, whatever, windblown. But um, I don't do my hair. You've probably noticed this from other videos. I just get it cut sort of in a, like just a shapeless thing, a layer thing. And I... There are days I don't even brush my hair. I'm going to be honest with you. <laughs> I'm a bit of a slob. I'm just, I don't give a shit about my hair. Um, the reason I don't have it short is because short is much more work. I've had short hair in my life and you have to get it um, cut very often. Um, now, fair enough, on a day-to-day -day basis, it's less hassle. But every six, you know, four to six weeks, you need to get it cut. And by the way, I loved Stacy's hair recently. Stacy, nice hair. I like your shaved head. I wish I could do that, but I'm just too lazy because, yeah. I would rather have months and months of doing nothing than days of doing nothing and then every four to six weeks have to cut it, right? So it seems like too much effort for me. Plus, I think I just have issues because I had um, short hair when I was a kid. My mother sort of forced it on me and I didn't like it then. I never wanted it, but I kind of had it. So when I had an opportunity to grow it out, I just never really looked back. I've had long hair for many, many years. And I don't always, I don't think of that as a gender thing. I really genuinely don't. Although my sister and I argue about this quite a bit because she has quite short hair compared to mine. And she always says, long hair is a very female thing. And I say, why? In the 90s? She's like, but it's not the 90s. And she's right. In the 90s, men had long hair, but they just don't anymore. Lots, Most men don't have long hair anymore. So it does kind of decidedly put you in the female uh, portion of the binary. Um, clothing, like I said, I've worn a lot of men's clothes. I wear typically men's clothes throughout the, the work year. Like I'll wear a tank top and then a men's colored shirt and a pair of khakis. And then, like, Keens or something, men's Keens, unisex Keens. We're going to do a video on shoes, you mark my words, because we did it once before and it was a lot of fun. But I know Jay's really hot for that topic, and I'd love to I'd love to redo shoes, because shoes is another, one of my favorite subjects, too. But I typically wear a kind of larger, like, wide, I don't have a wide foot, but I prefer a wide shoe, so I will wear a lot of men's shoes. Um, and I have a strange size foot. I'm like a ladies eight, which is like a boys six. And then I can sometimes wear men's seven, but then it's it's hard to fit my foot in men's footwear. 
I can sort of get away with it sometimes. And then like Burke, I'm a 39. I love UK, by the way. I love UK sizing. Okay, so am I stealth? No, not even a little bit. Um, I do use, most people use the gender pronoun she with me, and I'm fine with that. I've never, I've never corrected them. I guess I prefer they in theory. I love it when people on the channel call me they. I love it when my sister called. One time I think my sister referred to me as her sibling, not her sister. I love that. I love that in theory. It's all very theoretical to me because in reality it just doesn't happen all that often. And and I'm okay with that. It's not that big of a deal to me. Um, I don't know that I would ever be terribly comfortable living stealth. Partly because I, I'm just too in your face. I'm too much of an obnoxious, like what you see is what you get person. And when people ask me direct questions, I give them direct answers. Like I would never try and avoid a question. If somebody said to me, you know, what's the deal with this gender queer chat video thing you do? I would say, yeah, I, I don't feel like I'm female, but I also don't feel like I'm male. And then if they were to ask like, well, what pronoun should I use? I'd say whatever, whatever you want. It doesn't bother me. Um, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't necessarily say, you know, I have gender uh, identity issues and I don't want to talk about them. I would never say that because that's not me. That's not who I am <clears throat> or trying to avoid the conversation or change the subject. I would never do that. And I know that that's uh, partly being 40. I think it's also, I've always been pretty out there. Like I've always been a, what you see is what you get kind of person. I've been very lucky, very lucky. And my sister and I had a long talk today about privilege too. And I do understand that I am so grossly privileged because I had a family that accepted me completely as is. I have a culture, I live in a Canadian culture that accepts people just generally speaking as is. There's not a lot of, um, uh, you know, racism, homophobia, hatred in this country in the way there are in other countries. Now, of course it exists here, but I've never been the recipient of it uh, overtly, possibly, you know, in small, I've been the victim of sexism and stuff like that. But I mean, it's not bad by any stretch of the imagination. Um, you know, I don't have to veil up. I don't have to get married you know I don't, there's a billion things that I don't have to do even though I was born with a vagina and I know that's not true for a huge chunk of the world um what else was I going to say about stealth I think for a lot of years I felt I thought for a lot of years I had I felt weird about stealth I read a book about a woman I think she was a bond girl who had been born a man and was a transsexual and I remember when I read the chapter about how her husband I think she was outed quite publicly at either at her wedding or shortly thereafter to a quite a rich man. And apparently he left her shortly thereafter because he was so humiliated that she had lied to him. But it was so obvious that he left her because he was humiliated that she was now outed to his family. Of course he knew. I'm assuming he knew that she was trans and married her anyway. And that when she was outed publicly, he couldn't deal with that. He could deal with her as a trans person, a trans woman, but he couldn't deal with the public outing. And um, But I could be wrong. Maybe he did not know. Maybe he genuinely did not know that she was trans and it took him by surprise and he divorced her for that reason. I don't know. I just think when I've read things like that in the past, I thought, why would you not disclose that to your partner, like your, the person you're closest to in the world? But like I said in previous videos, I have, I do understand. Over the years, I've really grown to understand why people choose to live stealth, why they choose to... Um, never disclose their um, their birth sex and it really is nobody's business and it really shouldn't matter and I know that sometimes it bites you in the ass because you come out looking like a liar and, and I feel terrible for people like that because it's not fair but it's kind of the world we live in it sucks um, I think that's it for me we don't have a bonus question and I don't have it up on the screen um, should I make one up real quick your favorite smell and the only reason that even popped to mind is because my sister gave me this Sicilian orange. Oh my God. I love citrus smells. That is such a, oh my God. Okay. And the other smell that I love is fleet. I don't think Americans can get it. It's called fleecy fresh air. It's um, like a downy fabric softener, but the brand is fleecy and the scent is fresh air. And it's just one of my favorite smells in the world. I always say if there's a heaven, that's what heaven smells like. Okay, I uh, hope you guys have a good week. Christina, thank you for the topic. Catch you guys next week. Bye-bye.